Listen up all you do-it-yourselfers. Today's video is an introduction to the world of spraying. I'm James from thepaintpeople.com. Whether or not we're talking about picking colors or using equipment properly, this channel is all about the world of painting and decorating. Our goal in this channel is to pass on the knowledge that we've accumulated over the last few decades in the painting industry. We do two new videos every single week, so go ahead and subscribe if you get value from this kind of content. And don't be shy, share it with your friends. Now the use of airless sprayers is quite technical, but this video is more of an overview on why you would spray in the first place. Even for a lot of the contractors watching right now, you may not be using sprays all that much because oftentimes rolling and brushing is pretty sufficient. But for those of you who are thinking of dabbling in the world of spray, or maybe you're just a do-it-yourselfer that wants to spray some of your furniture, this is the video to get you started. And to do that, we're gonna go over to the College of Spray Knowledge with Dazzling Dave, our local spray expert. Take it away, Dave. Hi, I'm Dazzling Dave. I've been in the industry for about maybe 20 years now, doing spray repair for about 15. Airless spray is pretty much uh, the atomization of paint with uh, PSI and laying down the paint instead of rolling and brushing. Reasons for, for buying a sprayer would be uh, to, to speed up your process if you're doing a lot of commercial work and you're doing a lot of overhead spraying of uh, dry fall or block filler or whatnot. You're in and out way quicker than you would if you're brushing and rolling. Speed on your job site is, is key because the faster you get a job done, and the faster you can get onto the next job. Rolling does take longer than spraying and uh, brushing does leave marks. Roller and brush marks are usually like the most common thing. For doors and trim, you'll stroke it with a brush, you'll, you'll see the brush mark. It doesn't go on very, very smooth. With, with spray, it comes on smooth, almost like a glass finish. Maintenance on, on these machines are is very, very vital. Um, if you guys leave paint in and it dries up, the, the machine is pretty much toast. It is costly to repair a machine that is not maintained properly. Uh, parts do fail and it gets a little pricey. So maintenance is uh, the, the best thing for it every day to clean that thing out and clean out your filters and make sure that it's, it's flushed out and ready to go for the next day. Masking is very, very important. You do have uh, overspray, it gets everywhere. You pretty much have to seal the room uh, if you're gonna be masking it. Uh, you do not wanna get any overspray on any finish of like wood finish or anything like that because then you have to clean it up. There is many different machines for different uses. There's commercial use, there's residential use, and then there's the fine finish use. If you're a contractor that's not into spraying yet, but uh, is very interested in trying it out, uh, there is a lot of benefits. It makes you look a little bit more professional when you show up to the job site with a machine and, and you know how to use it. If this video has helped you out in any way, or if you do have any questions, please make a comment below. Stay tuned for more future spray videos. Now this video is the first part of a series of spray videos, and they'll get more and more difficult and detailed as we go along. So stay tuned for the next one. And in the meantime, you can check out this video where we talk about spray finishing. It's very important to use the right finish for the right job and we go through all the major interior finishes you will find on any project. As always, this video, just treat it like I'm adding a tool to your tool belt. It's up to you to use it though.